Okay then, if you'd like to lift your Bibles with me, just say after me, Father God in heaven, let your word be in my mind, let your word be in my heart, let your word be on my lips, and most importantly, let your grace show in my life. Amen. 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 Any more amens? Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. So, we're on to Psalm 65. Psalm 65. What do we see here? Mm. It's all about praise for God's salvation and for God's providence especially. And that's what it seems to be about today. About God's providence. So, there's praise for God. And also it says in verse 4, Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts, and we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. So, when we pray, it says in verse 5, By awesome deeds in righteousness you will answer us, O God of salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth. So this kind of points us to the fact that God is looking after us. God has created this world. He made man as the pinnacle of creation, remember? Adam, the first man, was made as the pinnacle of creation. He was there and he was a perfect man. I'm not sure if anyone would like to find a perfect man, but <laughs> there, you'd like to find a perfect man? Me too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was perfect, he was incredibly intelligent, he actually named all the animals, and so he was very, 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 very clever, and he had a, bo a body like an Adonis, I'm sure that you ladies would have loved to have met Adam, he would have been a great guy, and uh, you probably would have liked to see him, just an, a magnificent specimen of manhood that God created, and the same with Eve as well how great she was. But anyway, it's all about the providence of God and the fact that when we are chosen by God, and I think sometimes we forget that we think we have chosen God, but we haven't. God chooses us. But he doesn't choose us because of any good in us. He chooses us for whatever reason he has and maybe he has a sense of purpose of us to actually perform and do something and and that's the reason he's chosen us there are, he's created each one of us with individual gifts and talents um, in the natural and sometimes he uses those natural gifts and talents but at the same time he also gives us supernatural gifts and talents so we can't even think about the fact that he's only chosen us because we are talented in this way or that way he chooses us through his grace we didn't deserve it we weren't good enough we will never be good enough but he chose us if he's chosen you and you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life that God has revealed Jesus Christ to you by the power of the Holy Spirit open your eyes by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can see him so you can recognize him through Christ then when he's done that he's done that is a work of his grace it's not a work of you obviously we're not passive in our salvation so we need to respond God has given us a, f a wonderful gift of salvation but we have to respond to it and this is where the providence of God really shows up it shows up in the fact that it's by his grace. The fact that he is a good God. The fact that he, he loves his people. The fact that he wants to bless us. This is where we start. We need to start off with that premise and not see God as some policeman that is trying to uh, wait for us to, to do something wrong so he can jump all over us and, and uh, punish us. That's not, that's not the God of the Bible, that is man's understanding and man's creation of a different kind of God and we're not supposed to be looking at God as someone who is like that, who is a bit mean and uh, you know resentful and uh, reactionary we're looking 
to see and understand God is a good God. Yeah? And he says, by, your, by awesome deeds in righteousness you will answer us. Which he did. He brought forth Jesus Christ for us. But he's the one who provides everything. It says here in verse 9, You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. Well, that's also pertaining to the river of God being the Holy Spirit that is full to the brim, that is full to overflowing. That water, that is spiritual life. That is life-giving water, the water of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is often denoted as water. So this is the Holy Spirit's flowing in our lives to bring us to God and to give us a wonderful life. It's, it's full of water, it's full of life. And he says, you provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. And so we understand that all our food comes from God. God created this world, he created all the fruit, all the, the grain, all the animals, he created everything for man to dominate and be the pinnacle of that creation and to subdue the earth and everything in it. Obviously, sin, people falling short of God's glory because of the fall, and because of our fallen nature, um, you know, we, we do mess up a lot, even though we're here to subdue the earth. We tend to subdue it in the wrong way in many ways. We're not very good stewards. Certainly there's a lot of problems in the world today because of this. Um, but understanding it's God who's at the centre of it. So this is not going to be wrapped up. This is not going to stop. The world isn't going to end because there's a few fights in Ukraine. The world's not going to end because there's a bit of a famine somewhere in the world. The world's not going to end because there's a few floods or because there's, you know, something's heating up in different places. We go through these phases in the world, in the world all the time. Until God decides to wrap it up, he will maintain it. He will keep it going he will but obviously man's greed and the problems that we have cutting down all the rainforests we've got to be prepared and accept the fact that you know we've done a lot that has harmed God's earth and so this is one of the things that we need to be aware of but at the same time we need to also fall back on God's goodness and his glory we need to make sure that we we try to right some of the things that have gone wrong but at the end of the day, we rely on God and his resources and what he does, as far as we're concerned, in this world is why we don't have to worry. You know, we're told elsewhere, God says, you know, not even a sparrow falls to the ground without God knows about it. You know, and, you know, if he'll clothe the lilies of the field, how much will he clothe you? You know, he's going to give you the sustenance that you need he's going to provide if you really trust in God and fully give your life to God then he is going to he's going to provide for you he's going to he's going to protect you he's not going to stop you from having all sorts of things happen but he's going to give you the strength to to go through all sorts of things trials and tribulations and your faith will be tested but at the end of the day he is your resource we are citizens of heaven so he becomes our main resource. Let's just turn to Isaiah very quickly. This is Isaiah 55. And we're reading from verse 10. And again, as I say this, the readings today are all about God's providence. It says in verse 10, this is Isaiah 55, verse 10. And it says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So there is a sense in which God is the one who provides for us to develop and grow. There is a sense in which God gives us this whole idea of what we sow is what we reap. So God gives you the seed. He gives seed for the sower. 
if you're a sower. Now this is also spiritual seed, this is not just physical seed, this is trying to give you an understanding about spiritual seed and Jesus in the Gospel talks a bit more about this <coughs> as, we go, as we go on. So, you know, there is, there is a, a real thing about this seed for the sower. So there's a sense in which God sows and gives us seed in the physical, but he also points us to the fact that everything comes from the spiritual. God created this. God is spirit. He worked with all the material aspects of this earth, but he is spirit. He's a spirit being. But he's created. He's a creator God. So although he's spirit, he creates. He creates and he manifests in the flesh. Like through Jesus. He manifested this, he manifested this world. And created. he can create something out of nothing. And so we have to understand this is the God that we serve. He is all-powerful. You know? He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. So he's is everywhere. We we have a God who is all powerful and he's a creator. And so he's created a, a, a situation for, for something to work in your life when he says he provides seed for the sower, when he calls you to himself and you become a believer, when you become someone who becomes part of his family through salvation and through being born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, by having belief and trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation, you become part of God's family. And so he provides for you seed. You think, what does that mean then? I'm not a farmer. I'm a psychotherapist. <laughs> what do I need feed seed for? <laughs> what, for the birds? Okay, well, but he gives us seed in the sense that he will give you something that will help you to survive, to work, to prosper and so that is his seed to you now his seed to you can be also your gifts and your talents and it will also become your spiritual gifts and talents that is his seed in your life and it will grow and develop and so seed is really important so if we want to do something in our lives if we want to build and if we want to develop and grow we plant seeds. This is the, you know, the law of, of sowing and reaping. You, whatever you plant, if you sow potatoes, you get potatoes, you don't get carrots. And so you sow, and then you reap what you sow. So if you want to reap spiritual children, you want to find people coming to God, then what you sow is important. But you have to be spiritual to start with. If you're not sowing the right kind of spirit, you won't get spiritual children. That won't happen. You've got to be very careful. You don't start sowing for the wrong reasons and sowing and getting the wrong things happening. So sowing is really important and God gives us that seed. The seed is the word of God. And so when we sow that seed into our lives, in other words, when we receive that seed in our own lives, then we gain a harvest from that. We become wise as children of God. Sowing that seed into our own lives is applying that seed to our lives. Not just taking the seed and kind of eating it and going, oh, that's interesting. You know, but actually sowing it in such a way that we, we apply that to our lives and we use that seed to grow. To grow ourselves and to grow other people. And it's also a physical seed. In the sense that God will give you certain things. He gives you bread to eat. He provides for us. So that came from seed, obviously. But he also gives seed to the sower. The one who wants to work. And the one who wants to develop and grow and help other people, he's going to give you the seed. He's going to give you the understanding. He's going to give you the wisdom you need to live this life and to help other people in the right way. 
And you know, when you're in trouble, and when you don't have enough money, and you don't have enough, shall we say, produce, or you don't have enough what you need, then obviously we ask God to provide what we need, but he provides seed. And sometimes we have to sow a seed. You have to work hard to get a few pounds, and then sowing that seed wisely into your future is really important. And we come back to tithing again, don't we? Because that's also seed that's being produced for you to be able to sow into God's kingdom, to sow into the work of God. And when you do that, you gain a harvest, you gain a blessing. Your other 90% becomes blessed and therefore it develops and grows more than it would have done had you not tithed because you're robbing God. So that's not, not a good thing. So we need to know that when we sow, we will reap. And you might sow in one area, but not reap in that area, but you'll reap in another area. You know, it's not a case of, you know, when you, when you sow and you do good deeds, for example, you might get that come back. God will bless you in other ways because of that. Just because you give someone money doesn't mean to say you're going to get loads of money. So, you know, we have to make sure we understand that one. But at the same time, if you have a generous nature and you are helping people all the time and you are giving them money to help them when they're in trouble, there are times when people are in trouble and need help, then God's going to bless you in, in, in other ways. When you help people, when you serve others, God will help you and you will be blessed in other ways. So this is where we un understand this seed for the sower and, and bread for the eater. So we know that we're going to be fed. We know that God's going to feed us in the same way that he fed Elijah with ravens. You know? He parked him by the brook and he had water and he was fed by ravens. He never went hungry. And this is, this is important to understand. This God produces. He gives food to us. He produces what we need in this, in this world. So this is an important thing for you. When you have something that is going on in your life, Start thinking about where your seed is going to come to to give you that breakthrough and give you what you need. You know, when you've got loads of bills, you know, put them on the Bible, you know, and stand on it and stand on God's word and, and declare God is going to provide. It's not going to happen if you just sit on the couch and wait for money to fall through the letterbox. Obviously not. But if you sow the seed that God's given into your life, the gifts, the talents, the small amount of money that you may be able to earn in a particular time, and you sow that into your life, and you use it for God's glory, He will provide for you. He will give you bread for the eater. That's how it works. Sowing and reaping. Very, very important. Because he created this law. You know, we know all the laws of the universe generally, but sowing and reaping is something that people forget. You know? Sometimes we get to understand that when we, when we sow badly, then sometimes we get things coming back at us badly. So that's not good. And so we want to sow generously, we want to sow good, we want to sow God's love. And so this is where we start. It's the seed that God gives us. When God calls you to himself, he gives you a seed of grace. He creates a new heart in you. So you have a new heart so that you have something that you want to do for God. You suddenly begin to be someone who... God can use because you have grace. 
So that seed then grows and develops. It's important to understand this. This is where we, we need to understand what God's doing in our lives. And he says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. You see, sowing God's word is really important. That's the following verse. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now, sometimes God's word goes forward, and we think, well, that didn't work. Something else happened. So when we, we talk about Jesus and we tell other people about Jesus, sometimes it doesn't seem to work. People run away. People reject it. People decide that that's not for them. Well, it accomplished what God's purpose was in that word going out. So whether it's going to fall on good ground or not, the seed goes out so that people make the decision. And sometimes people make the decision to reject it. And so it is accomplishing what God set out for it to do. We, neither, we had to make a decision about Jesus. Everyone on this planet needs to make a decision about Jesus. Do you accept him or do you reject him? This is the word. He's sowing the word. The word is Jesus. When we sow the word out, people either accept it or reject it. So it always accomplishes God's purpose. And God knows those that are called and are going to come. We don't, but he does. But that's how it works. We preach the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ, and then it's up to the person to receive it. As I say, we're not passive in our salvation. So then it's up to you, once you've been given that opportunity, to either receive it or reject it. And some receive it, and hopefully we're all here receiving the word, and then there are other people who reject it. And they choose to go elsewhere because they don't accept the word and that there's only one way to God through Jesus Christ. And they don't accept, they can't accept it. So we have to accept that that's what happens. And that is God's word not returning void, not returning without having an effect. It always has an effect. Is this making sense to anybody? Amen. Amen. Okay, well we're going to go to the New Testament.